General Lee Daniels, military representative for the United States, exchanged a sidelong glance with his Russian equivalent, General Sovey Slotskinsk, and found essentially the same question being directed back at him. The fuck he said? Do you... He began slowly, not even bothering to let the lawyers and politicians have a say in this matter. This was his house now. Maybe want to run that by me again? The tall, four-armed blue alien male, from what he could tell, but there were no real distinguishing marks between the five or six present, even the guards they brought, nodded, and politely repeated his statement. The Clannifer conglomerate of worlds would like to formally invite humanity to a war, he reiterated. There was a snort somewhere in the rear, but the general, rather than mirth, felt nothing but the kind of overwhelming disdain one feels when trying to explain the negative effects of slavery to someone who simply wasn't having it. General Daniels himself was beat to the chase, this time by his French counterpart. General Albert, the tea is fucking silent, le brave. Oh, so we did hear you. His eyes narrowed. Now explain why. The tall prick didn't seem to sense anything wrong with the dramatically shifting atmosphere, and happily expanded on his statement. Just a formality, we assure you, he said. Our people have boasted the most robust streak of victories in living galactic memory. That was about to change real fucking fast. And yet there is no known conflict involving humans. While this isn't unheard of for intelligent races, it is considered something of a kslank, a faux pas, to those of us who have earned the title Death Race, a title you are bestowed upon your first contact with the overarching community through war and conquest. He, no, war starts with mentality. It reached behind itself and produced a pamphlet. We have taken the opportunity to prepare a list of rules of engagement to be honoured between all participants, as well as a schedule and exchange agreement and fair armistice for the conclusion. It handed the pamphlet to the UN representative, politely. Please, feel free to review and make any changes as you feel appropriate. Oh, but please recognise our planet's needs as you do. General Daniel stepped forward, gingerly picked up the pamphlet up off the representative's table, and began thumbing through it. And as soon as he saw words like holidays and dietary considerations of the opposition, he handed it to the others. He was done, and already knew what would be happening. Alright, I just want to be clear first. Please define a standard war on the intergalactic stage. Happy to, it said. Turning about, the being gestured to another of his party, one with a sharper, bulkier uniform. A soldier, if ever one existed on that planet. Commander? The other one nodded and stepped forward, exchanging places fluently with his counterpart. Wars are generally, on a galactic scale, between four tords, what equates to around six months to humans, and six tiles, or two centuries. Both parties agree on a starting position in time, and the challenged parties allow the terms of engagement, either in space or planet side. They are started for a variety of reasons, as I'm sure you are aware, from trade dispute to racial tensions, and sometimes even require mediation to remain civil. Another snort. Remove that man, ordered Daniels. Then gesture for it to continue once a pair of MPs escorted a lawyer out of the room. Thank you. As I was saying, ours will be a minor war, more of a welcoming party really, and we don't expect it to take longer than three tours at best. A shrug nonchalantly. Some martial engagements... We believe you prefer ground combat, and a few flags planted, and that's it. Treat the injured, pay for any damages, and everyone goes home happy. Holy shit. Is that the definition of laser tag, or am I going senile? Asked General Stonskinsk. General Daniels, who had got into more than a few fistfights during laser tag, didn't disagree, but continued by addressing the Clanifer delegates. I see. Did you, perchance, do any research on our definition of war prior to your arrival? He asked. The odd seeming question clearly was one they weren't expecting. No? Why, does the word mean something different here? Asked one of the it's. General Daniels grinned, wide and mean, and made an offer. I see, a cultural difference, nothing too much to worry about. But how about this? He held up a finger, as though the idea had just come to him, as though he hadn't come up with it the moment he'd seen minimum casualties in the pamphlet. What say you get some crash course research in? You watch three human movies, we here feel best to pick war, and then we'll review your proposal. Unless, of course, any here object. He turned to his co-workers, and while none of the lawyers seemed on board, the various generals all had the same shit-eating grin on their faces as he did. The Clanifer rep from before, clearly as contextually as aware as cardboard, happily clapped and said, Ooh, 
What a wonderful idea! We'll have to remember it for next time. Of course we agree. I am authorised by the Prime to mediate the war in all facets. The generals, all six, gathered around like school children, and drew straws to choose who would get to pick the movies. The winning nations were Japan, Russia and France, but Sove surrendered his to Lee, saying, Make me proud, and bring me scotch. Sixteen hours later. The movies chosen were a pair of classics and a documentary. It took about a minute for Saving Private Ryan to change the colour of their visitors from blue to everything but, and Au revoir Los Enfants didn't let up in the slightest. Yamada, the wily fuck, chose a blow-for-blow, three-hour reconstruction of the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and its effects, telling Daniels afterwards it was either this or a reconstruction of Shiroyama, but she felt it was going too far back, but kind of regretted it now. When the big moment finally came for the first bomb to fall, Daniels couldn't help it. He leaned in close to the Clanifa, and whispered the chorus, here comes the sun, do 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 do, in their ears, only for the nuclear flash to rip out a moment later. When the documentary finally ended, and the most pregnant, terrified sons he'd ever been a part of reigned over the delegates, the surrounded delegates, Daniels gave the signal for Sove for his role. The booming, terribly scarred Russian stood and, in the best human Lee had ever seen him, asked, Fuck it, let's make it a movie day. Anyone up for something a little more adult? The Its huddled together in fear, unable to form anything close to comprehensible language, only for Daniels to cut in and say, Afraid not, the lawyers and politicos just finished their agreement document. We've all got a war to get ready for. Sheer terror. The polite war ended in a week with a series of non-lethal matches. Humanity's victory was overwhelmingly one-sided. Human cinema was also banned anywhere outside human-controlled territory.